I think most would agree that the electric bike industry is relatively new. So when it comes to having a better understanding and getting more education on a topic, I think that we have a long way to go. It can be difficult to kind of find the resources or figure out how to become educated about electric bikes and that sort of thing. So I wanted to make this video to talk about some of the resources that I've used over the years. A lot of these perspectives and ideas probably come from more of a U.S. focus, but I hope Hope that everybody will find this to be useful. Now I've been involved with the electric bike industry for over 11 years when I started my shop in Long Island in 2011. At that time, really, there was not that much information out there about electric bikes. I was always searching for it, and I'm kind of the type of person that, that really likes to understand things on a deeper level, understands the influences. One thing was clear to me that the market in the U.S. was pretty small, but the market in other places was more developed. Uh, namely, at that time, it was China to be the biggest market, as it still continues to be, and Europe was growing to be very large as well. At that time in the U.S., I'd say probably one of the biggest markets for electric bikes was kind of the DIY build it yourself. Actually, the first electric bike I had, I actually built myself. There was a community called Endless Sphere, which I had participated in and found to be really helpful and really insightful and some really innovative people on there, engineers and that sort of thing that were bringing their experience from other areas and building some really interesting bikes. And that still exists today. There's the Endless Sphere website as well as the Facebook group. But as I got more into some of the factory built stuff, I started to connect with my friend Court at Electric Bike Review. And that I think was like 2012 when we first met each other. I think it might have been at Interbike. We just kind of both like just exploring this new industry and he, he came to it from a different angle. He had different experiences coming into this space and we reviewed a bunch of bikes together and that was a really cool experience. And through that process, we're kind of like learning and this is something I try to do. And I think that he does this pretty effectively as well, which is like learning out loud. I'm always cautious of people that proclaim to be experts or say like, this is it, there's there's no other way, uh, I, I got it all figured out. The reality is, as I said earlier, this is a new industry and we have a really long way to go. And really, I think he influenced me a lot to, to get into the YouTube space among, among other people. But beyond the videos and that sort of thing, he also had a forum, which I found to be really helpful. And I think that's where I tend to enjoy learning from the most is people's real life experience, opposed to a kind of proclaimed expert, if you will, gather from multiple different data sources, as opposed to, you know, just looking at one. Now, these websites are focused a little bit more on the technology side but to understand some other aspects um, one website that I find to be really helpful is called people for bikes people for bikes is a nonprofit organization and really the largest advocacy organization in the country and they have a lot of information about the different laws around electric bikes they do a lot of advocacy work and I guess you could say most of their work is kind of primarily focused around advocacy and helping in in the government sector and just helping to educate people and I believe that they're also trying to help to build community as well. They have an app called Ride Spot and it helps connect you with different trails in your area and different things like that, which is cool. And there's a bunch of other sites out there as well that you might consider looking at. Electric Bike Report is one. There's another one called eBikes HQ. There's some other like publications. One is called Cycle Volta. They do a lot of writing about electric bikes and reviews and different things like that. The important thing is to consider like the source and like what their motivation is. One of the big challenges I have with traditional media these days is affiliate programs. A lot of media these days is powered by revenue that's generated as a result of referrals that happen. So a lot of media publications put out information and they basically get kickbacks based on purchases made as a result of links that are clicked on the articles that they write. This seems to be one of the bigger driving factors in a lot of the publications these days. So that's an important thing to consider. It's like, you know, is this publication just trying to sell me this product or are they actually just trying to educate me on it? Now, obviously, as stated before, I'm a retailer. I sell electric bikes. So naturally, when I create content, I do have a certain leaning, but 
at the same time, the way that I think about it is that I'm able to really sell any products that I want. I really focused on the best quality and, and that sort of thing. But, you know, other people have different motivations. We're also in the process of creating kind of a blog for our website. We have actually put a lot of resources behind that. So we're creating a knowledge base and a, and a blog and that sort of thing, which we plan to launch next year. Uh, historically, we've been very focused on just creating YouTube videos for education is that's a medium that comes more naturally to me as somebody that's dyslexic. And speaking of YouTube, I find that to be a really helpful medium to learn. I particularly like to hear like longer conversations. I don't always look to YouTube to get like straight facts about things. I look to it to get more like perspectives and to have a wider view of things. Now speaking about e-bikes in general, there's many different channels. Obviously our channel, shameless plug there. We try to educate people about different bikes cargo bikes, commuter bikes, etc., as well as how to use the bikes and how to better participate in the community. And there's another channel called E-Bike School from a guy named uh, Micah Toll. He also writes and makes videos for Electrek, which is another publication. And they're historically an electric car publication, but they've done a lot in the e-bike space as well. There's another one called Area 13. It used to be called Bolton Bikes. We were actually on a podcast with him. So there's different ideas about like what's best and like what's the best direction to go. A lot of people focus on just like, let's find the most powerful thing. Some are like, what's be more sustainable or like what's the overall experience. And the way I think of that is to compare other similar industries. The cell phone industry where some people are like they like android or they like apple or the automotive industry how you know different people like different types of cars or some people like the more like american muscle type thing some people more like the refinements of like european vehicles there's so many different schools of thought so to understand that you know you're not necessarily going to get just like one brand of education everybody's going to have their own perspective of like what's good or what's right and it's really up to you to decide like what makes the most sense for you if you're buying a bike just for recreation you might have certain criteria that's important to you and you might not be as concerned about longevity or or different things like that but if you're you know buying a bike for commuting or carrying your kids for that matter you might have different criteria that you're considering and and we tend to focus more in that camp so it's a little bit of a different perspective where we're trying to really focus more on like building in the direction of like vehicles if you will with standards that people come to expect around that type of product where others are just focused on you know how fast can it go or, or different things like that so if you're into electric mountain biking there's a bunch of different channels out there one of them is EMBN which is part of the global cycling network they produce a lot of videos on electric mountain bikes there was another channel called Rob Rob EMTB. If you want to get more of a like general education about bicycling and bike commuting and that sort of thing, I found this channel called Shifter to be a, a really good resource. He does kind of balance things between uh, traditional non-electric bikes and electric bikes, but really the concepts that he's discussing are more general topics different types of ponchos that you can wear or like how to carry coffee on your bike and things like that. Another channel I enjoy is from a friend of mine, Arlie, uh, it's called Bike Shop Girl. She actually does marketing for Turn as well, but she kind of covers more general topics around bike commuting. And, and I think she kind of has this motto about like people using their car less to participate in the community. So I think that there's a lot of parallels between like our channel and, and hers and, and trying just to help educate people in different ways and like bring these conversation starters to people it's about the community it's about communicating with each other i mean one of the things i find to be most helpful overall these days for me is like a youtube comments people just write amazing things there i don't always have an opportunity to reply to them but i read almost all of them and it helps to create more of a conversation as opposed to me just dictating like, this is what it is. And I want to try to find more ways to embrace that as well. You know, one of the things I was talking about is like potentially doing like some live videos or podcasts or that sort of thing. And I'm going to talk about podcasts in just a moment, but one more YouTube channel that could be kind of interesting for you to check out is, is one that actually started around about the same time as ours, but it really blew up. It's called Not Just Bikes. They have the saying about getting 
doing orange peeled, which is like basically converting to this like Dutch way of thinking about bikes. But overall, I think he presents information in a, in a way that really challenges you to think and, and think outside the box. And one of the biggest things that he really does is try to encourage people to think outside of just the automobile mentality, uh, especially as like people living in the United States, we can tend to think the car as like the first mode of transportation, but the reality is many people throughout the rest of the world, like that's not the way that they think. And that's not necessarily like their first choice. We've kind of been marketed to and we've been trained to believe that that is the way. And, and to some extent, it's also the infrastructure that's been built, but you can check more of that stuff out. We did a ride along video with him, which was pretty cool. I'll try to post some more channels in the description as well. And if you have others, you know, certainly share them in the comments. Have you ever looked for a way to learn math, science, or computer science in an interactive way? Well, brilliant.org is built just for that. Brilliant has thousands of lessons with new ones added every month. They take big, complex topics and break them down to more understandable parts, and I found it to work really well. I've been using them to brush up on some of my computer science and even learn some things in new areas like neural networks. It's a nice way to continue expanding your knowledge and learn through their bite-sized lessons. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org forward slash propel or click on the link in the description. The first 200 people will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So if you have goals to improve your STEM skills, Brilliant is a great resource. Reddit is another source that I use, but this is a place where I find the kind of schools of thought to get a bit challenging because it seems that the, the largest community for e-bikes or electric bikes in Reddit is the e-bikes subreddit. And I have participated in there, but I found that it's a little bit challenging because there tends to be more of a focus on like high power, DIY and that sort of thing. And, and, and I think some people might find that like my content and the way that I pursue things to be a challenge to that. So I really wish that there was more of a electric bike Reddit that was like a little bit more like all encompassing and maybe it's moving in that direction as the industry evolves a little bit. But I will say that the cargo bike Reddit, uh, I really like that one. I found that that's a really good one and I, I really enjoy it. And there's overall a lot of Reddits and like bike commuting and, and bicycling. You can find just general resources around bicycling. That's that's definitely cool to check out. Another area I found to be really helpful is bike shows. In the early days of my business, we were able to participate in Inner Bike, which is the US show or the main US show for bicycles, which eventually kind of became an electric bike show. Unfortunately, that show kind of was discontinued. And there hasn't really been something specifically that has replaced it in the US. There's been a lot of kind of smaller shows that maybe have aspirations of doing that. One is called CABDA, which is more around the bike industry and, and people in the business. And, and it's kind of the, the trade of, of bikes and that sort of thing. And then there's also more like consumer shows, like there was the e-bike expo and now there's the electrify expo. But the show that I really enjoy the most is called Eurobike. It's in Germany once a year historically in a city called Friedrichshafen. How do you say that? Friedrichshafen. Friedrichshafen. Something like that. Friedrichshafen. Friedrichshafen. <laughs> But actually this past year they moved it to Frankfurt. I really enjoy going there mainly because I find that that market is a lot more mature. And when I visit there, I get to learn about all the different motors and components and the different bike brands and just communicate with the different product designers and engineers, and everything like that. And it's just a very different experience. But I was able to go one year to the Taipei Bike Show, which is more for bike manufacturers and that's kind of where people go more for like sourcing the frame and the individual components and like building their own bikes. And at the time I was doing some work for a city bike in New York, helping to design an electric bike. I got to visit a bunch of factories and, and really understand on a deeper level, like how the whole process works. Everything from sourcing the components to manufacturing the frame to assembling the bike. Uh, it's it's really interesting to see all those little pieces and how all this stuff comes together. So I hope that I get an opportunity to go back to that show. You know, I was just looking to try and find um, the podcast that I listen to. And 
that's one area that I find to be a little bit lacking in the e-bike space. There's like really not that many podcasts out there. I really wish that there was more, but I find that there's some related to the e-bike industry. There's cycling industry news, NBDA, which is the National Bike Dealers Association. Electric Bike Action is another podcast that really cool. Tony Donaldson is the main guy there. He interviews a lot of different people on oftentimes it's like founders of companies explaining their products or just talking on more general topics. And the podcast shares the name of their magazine, Electric Bike Action, which has been around for some time. And They've always been great about, you know, publishing new products and reviews. They actually even did like a shop visit with us years ago. They help people to understand the, the bigger industry that's going on with a specific focus in the U.S. Another podcast I found to be helpful is called Micromobility. And then there's a lot of podcasts that kind of had existed for a period that don't exist now. But, you know, you can still go back through some of those archives and that could be a really helpful resource. And you really can't talk about education without talking about books. But in the book space, I'd say that there are not that many. There are some, I will say that one of the challenges around the book space is that oftentimes the material can become a bit outdated pretty quickly as this industry is changing and evolving pretty quickly. It does seem like a lot of the books that are out there were kind of used as sort of a marketing tool in a lot of ways. So I'm kind of cautious about that and and i guess personally i haven't really chosen to consume that so much and maybe it's also because i'm dyslexic but that's a whole nother thing another area is parallel industries if you really want to understand the trends and and like what's going on in the electric bike industry from a more like high level perspective i think it's really helpful to look at other industries and look at the stage that we're currently in the electric bike space for example, if you were to compare it to cell phones or automobile or computers or that sort of thing, you can understand like where we are in our adoption phase, where we are in the product maturity and different things like that, where we are at with, with standards. I found that to be really helpful to compare and contrast these different industries and, and look at the history. As you know, people say, like history repeats itself. This is certainly no different here. Another great resource to use is Facebook. And although I don't really tend to personally use Facebook, it's like a normal social thing, I do find the Facebook groups to be really great, particularly in the cargo bike space. I mean, I guess it's partly families tend to use Facebook. They wanna like share pictures of their babies and kids with their family, I, I don't know. But it's a good resource for electric bike education. But there's a lot of Facebook groups specific to the brand of bikes, everything from Reese and Mueller, they have several owners groups, everything from like standard Reese and Mueller bikes. They even have a specific one to Reese and Mueller cargo bikes, which was actually started here in the US, but there's people all over the world that participate there and, and and that's actually the interesting thing with a lot of these groups gazelle has another turn has a bunch of them there's the turn gsd one hsd one vectron everything and one thing i found to be really interesting is how the companies oftentimes can use this information to develop and improve upon their products so i really respect the companies that are active in those groups i think that that's a that's a big deal urban arrow has a pretty active owners group as well as butchers and bicycles then there's some more general groups there's the cargo bike republic mother load is another one which is actually more specifically a cargo bike group then there's some others like e-bike riders like over 60 as I mentioned before endless sphere has a facebook group well i hope you guys found this video to be useful and helpful again please share additional resources that you might have hopefully we can create more of a repository hopefully i can share more of those resources as we build uh, some more of our online repository of this sort of stuff next year as i mentioned as we're building up our knowledge base and blog this this could be helpful and as i stated before really what i'm trying to do is help people to have more of an informed perspective and an and opinion on what's going on because i think the more educated we are the better that we can act and and the better that we can avoid some of the pitfalls that others might experience so again thanks for watching hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you next time Thank you.